Welcome to the Calm Cafe, and this episode is titled The Introvert's Edge, appropriately because on this episode I interview Matthew Pollard, author, speaker, business success coach. He is known as the rapid growth guy. He's a uh, He's left Australia, and now he's hanging out in Austin, Texas, and he's one of the top business trainer coaches, and he shares with us his strategies, including the Netflix approach to podcasting. Not just for podcasting, but Matthew shares with us some of the strategies that he uses for creating content and how he became one of the top bloggers on the planet. That's right. Matthew stopped by the Calm Cafe and sit back, grab a pen and paper because he's got a number of things that you will want to write down and take action on. That's right. This episode is also labeled Just Do It. Hey, good afternoon. It's Dwayne Richards, the host of Calm Cafe. This is the place for entrepreneurs and small business owners. We talk about mindset, personal development, and professional development and bring on fascinating guests. And today, I have one for you. He is known as the Rapid Growth Guy. And I'm gonna let him explain a little bit more about what that is, and then just sit back and listen. As you know, we have fantastic conversations. It's just learning more about our guests and how he works with small business owners in the state of Texas. But his accent is not, it's not American. We'll wait. We'll learn a little bit more about that story. So, hey, good afternoon, Matthew. Welcome to the Calm Cafe. Thank you very much, Matt. I'm happy to be here. So you don't think I pull off the... Uh, I always say to people that I'm from North Texas, but the occasional person will believe it, but very few. <laughs> it sounds Australian. I did a little research. I saw, I saw it was uh, Melbourne, you know, that you've been in Melbourne, and uh, that's where you've built your reputation as the growth guy, and then you've, you've moved to Texas. So... Uh, Let's jump right into like why I, I saw a post about scary choices. So what was the uh, what was the reason for like getting out of Australia and, and moving to, to Texas? Well, I always have this rule that you have to always be challenging yourself because the day you stop challenging yourself is the day you stop moving, the day you stop being successful. And for me, I built five multi million dollar businesses in Australia before I turned thirty, and I. I'd worked 80 hours a week for, well, let's put it simply, as long as I can remember. And I just got to the stage where I was like, you know what? The, the big challenge for me these days is about re rediscovering myself, finding myself. So I spent all of 2000 and, well, the, first, the second half of 2012 rediscovering hobbies. So I did things like I got my scuba diving license, I got my motorbike license, I learned a language that didn't go so well. Uh, I learned, um, you know, I went rap jumping. I basically everything you'd imagine. I skydived. Just reacquainting myself with hobbies. I joined things like Groupon and Scoop On, all these little things. Not so much for the discounts, but to be presented with things I hadn't thought of. And I would just do everything. And then 2013, I got on a plane and I travelled the world for a year. So I spent three months in South America, three months in the US, three months in Europe. However, I met a girl back in. Austin, Texas in, in March of 2013. And I just got to the end of my Europe part and I was supposed to go to Asia and my heart wasn't back in it. So I just didn't want to, I wanted to be back in the US. So I got on a flight, I came back to the US and coming back to the US within two and a half months after being there for three months, getting through immigration is a little bit tricky. Luckily enough, my sales skills got me there. So I, I got back into the country. Otherwise I would never have been allowed back. So that was a terrifying uh, discovery when I got here, but then I um, spent another three months with her and made the decision that I was going to come to the US. So I went through the process of getting my visa, uh, and then I moved here. And I was like, "Well, everyone in Australia knows me, or at least knows of me. Um, no one here knows my name." And everyone, when you say, "Hey, I've been really successful in Australia," they're like, "That's cute." Twenty million people. Uh, so I, I got to Austin and I was like, all right, I'm going to restart my brand. But every business that I've had has gone from nothing to multi-million dollars within a couple of years, 50 staff. I don't want to get back into the trenches of 80 hours a week anymore. And I really want to do something that I'm really passionate about. And what I realized is the 
whole year, two years, three of growing a business, it's kind of boring to me. Like once you get the message right and the, the sales system right and you understand the niche, you get the packaging, the pricing, and you get the initial staff, after that, they're kind of doing the work and you end up with a bunch of staff you haven't even really met because your team's doing all of that. And you just get to close some of the bigger deals and build some of the bigger relationships. And that part's kind of boring to me. The thing that I really liked is looking at any business and saying, all right, so you're a business just like everything else or the business is, you know, my first business was in telecommunications. I can't think of anything more saturated. I'll wait except for education, which was my last business, which is saturated and highly educated. And I, I, for me, it was, okay, going into these markets and saying, how do I craft a message in this highly competitive, highly saturated market where everybody's doing the same thing and be seen as anything else other than a commodity, to be seen as something different in a way that people are excited and inspired to want to know more about me. Then how do I target a niche that nobody else is targeting? So as a byproduct of that, I have willing and wanting to buy clients where I live in a market of one, so I don't have to compete on price like everybody else. And then how do I craft a sales system? Well, what I discovered is I could do that in a series of weeks. Once I crafted that strategy, I then put it in place and we already would start to experience rapid growth. And I went, so what I want to do is I want to create a coaching model where I help people do just that thing. And then I spoke to a bunch of my friends and they're like, you are nuts. You want to create an online business. You don't know how to change the word that to the word they on a website. And on top of that, you want to create a coaching model where you only want to work with clients for six weeks total. Like the hardest thing in the world is to get a coaching client and then you want to hold on to them for dear life because if you lose them, then you've got to try and find another one. And I'm like, well, that's the model that I want. So I had to find a way to do that. So I created a podcast called The Better Business Coach. I built a blog called The Rapid Growth Blog. And I launched my website in, I'm going to go with February 2014. Within nine months, I was listed by Evan Carmichael as one of the most retweeted business coaches on Twitter. I won an international blogging award and I had a high six-figure income already within that six, within about a nine-month period. Well, six, you got to six figures in six months and then it just went on from there. So then I, I decided to move it into an online platform, which was terrifying for me because I had 150 five-star reviews. So I didn't want to risk that by building an online academy. But I've been excited to say, I mean, most cancellation rates for online academies is like 30 to 40%. And I launched it in February this year. And uh, we had, since then, we've got well over 120 people already enrolled. Our cancellation rate is well below 2%. And the results are actually mimicking what I do in the real world, which is, well, it's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of soul destroying and exciting because I always thought it was the magic of me in the room that did it. <laughs> but apparently it's, it's just the syllabus and the criteria and, and taking people through these things that you know, most people just don't spend time focusing on. Okay. Those are fantastic numbers because we were just talking about that, that you know, lots of people want to create membership, you know, membership websites and, and get people in and, the, and everyone wants the, re, you know, the residual income, but the retention rates aren't, aren't 2%. Well, people do. If, I, I remember reading a blog post a while back about, so everyone has told you this lie about if you can build an online course and charge $997, that's the, that's the happy price, right? $997. So if you can charge $997 and then launch your program, then you know, that's printing money. You're going to be so well off. But no one tells you that you then, oh, by the way, I don't do Facebook advertising, but a lot of people will say you've got to do it through Facebook advertising. So you end up spending a fortune on Facebook ads. So you end up making six or seven or five or four, depending on how good you are, $100 on the course. And then your cancellation rate is 30 to 40%. If you're good at maths and you're a CPA, so you should be, you end up at about zero. And then you have to look after the people in the course. I don't know about you, but the numbers don't really stack up. So for me, I did launch at uh, 997 when I first launched the program. But when I did it, I went, I am not going to launch a program that has a 30 to 40% cancellation rate. So most people, I mean, if you've heard of Jeff Walker and all the people that say, hey, just go and build a program, spend two days in front of a camera, just creating course material, then go out and do a four-part launch and, you know, sell the buzz and, you know, just launch the program and you'll make great money. Well, for me, I had a really successful coaching business where I had over 155 star reviews and not a single one less. And I'm like, if I do that, I'm going to end up with all these really bad reviews that are going to dilute 
the success that I've had in my one-on-one -on -one coaching, it's going to kill my online coaching business, my, my, my one-on-one -on -one coaching business. So, so that's just not what I'm going to do. So what I did instead was I sat down and I planned out what the syllabus was going to be and then I stopped and I then called all of my successful clients from everyone that I've worked with and I flew them into Austin and I interviewed them on what worked, what didn't work, what barriers they faced, how they overcame those and the learnings that they made along the way. And I created over eight hours worth of case study evidence of real people and the way it was applied. And then I went back and looked at my syllabus and made some additions, made some subtractions. And then I went and recorded my program. It took me 14 months to create my program. The difference is that it is now a program that does amazing for giving people results. It, the cancellation rate is incredibly low. The people that cancel is not for the reasons that most people cancel, which is, you know, your program didn't deliver on what it promised, right? The buzz doesn't, fall, doesn't end up disappearing. It's, you know, it's for little reasons. Like, I'm, you know, I realized I'm too busy or something happened in my family or financial reasons or whatever. But the program delivers and it will deliver a money while you sleep, which is the words you used before we were speaking, forever because the course is evergreen and it's just as applicable today as it is 10 years from now. I didn't focus on that fancy thing like Facebook ads or webinars, the hot thing of today. What I focused on is creating the A to Z of rapid growth and making sure that regardless of the technologies of the time, while we do talk about some of those things, they're the satellite things because they're the tactics. The tactics are the easiest part. It's getting the entire system, the marketing strategy, the message, the niche, the packaging, the pricing, the stories that you can tell. That's the thing that really makes the difference. Once you get to the sales element, that's just the distribution method and learning how to embed your stories and your messaging into podcast interviews, into online products so that people stick with you, into your blogs, into your social media. That's the easy bit. But that's the thing that most people spend their time on because they're like, oh, I need clients today. I don't have time to do all of this. So they spend the rest of their lives hustling to get clients as opposed to getting that stuff right. I mean, for me, I built an online website in 2014. Since October of 2014, I didn't update a single additional blog post. I didn't do anything new on social media. I had an evergreen system that ran on social media and I delivered a six figure income. And then I went down into a hole and I wrote a book. I built an online academy. And as of, well, by, probably by the time you launch this podcast, I'll have my new website launched. My book will be, uh, up for pre well, it's already up for pre-sale through a major. Uh, it's, it's through a major publisher, so it takes a bit of time, but it's finally up. And I'll have, and the online academy is blossoming, and the new sales page will be there. But how could I have done that if I didn't build the groundwork so that that business continued to run while I went and disappeared back into the production line? And then, as of next year, I'll go back into marketing. It's amazing because now, now it all comes. It's all very clear because I was on your website before we did this interview and saw like blog posts from 2015, you know, podcasts from 2015, and it's all relevant content. And then I'm like, that, that's interesting because it's, I know you're still doing business, but I'm like, why isn't there anything, why isn't there anything new? <laughs> but in some cases, why create new if you don't necessarily need new or wait and create new when it's, when you're ready to create new? So the world has told you that you need to create content forever. I don't want a full-time job. Right? I like to do stuff and make money, but I like to make money for the stuff I did forever. I don't want to feel like I have a full-time job. Like I'm a big fan of Pat Flynn. I learned you know, from Pat Flynn when I was first, but I didn't know how to change the word that to the word they. But he has three podcasts that he manages full-time all the time. Right? I don't, want, I don't want to be connected to anything. I want to be able to create stuff that delivers a huge impact. Like when I create a Better Business Coach podcast, Right, it hit new and noteworthy in video and audio format in three continents in 24 hours. And then, but I created 25 episodes. I call it my Netflix model of podcast. I launched with 25, I launched with eight, but I over the next eight weeks, I launched the 25 episodes. And when I got to 25 episodes, I stopped. And here's why. I created it like a training course. And when I get on podcast, and what I did is I did a bunch of podcast interviews in 2015, 2016. And what I would do is I would do an interview and then I would tell, somebody would ask me a question. I'd say, that's a really great question. You know, what I'll do is I'll explain it simply now, but I actually did a podcast episode on that. 
And if you go to episode 17, it's called Forget About Goals, Why Is The Key To Success? You should definitely check that out at betterbusinesscoachpodcast.com. Back to the interview, right? And what would happen is all of these really big podcast uh, people would publish that episode. People would listen to it and go, oh, I should check that out. They'll go back to that episode and go, wow, this guy, it makes amazing content. Of course I do. I did 25 episodes. I didn't have to worry about producing the next episode every day, every week. I just produced 25 great episodes. So what happens is people then binge listen to the 25 episodes and they're like, this is what he does for free? That's amazing. Imagine what the paid stuff would look like. And then they subscribe, they book phone calls with me, they became coaching clients, they became academy students. So I had that model worked really well. So instead of producing more content, I marketed the content that I had. I also focused on different distribution methods. So I focus on all social medias, all Facebook and LinkedIn groups, and I distribute the content out to those to tap into new audiences with my already prepared content. Now, I should tell you, I spend less than an hour a week marketing, yet I make over a six-figure income. Now, I'm a marketer, and I always say, you've got to spend more time marketing, more time marketing, but I built such great content, I spent the time on that, that when I focused on, when I do a podcast interview like this, people listen to it and they're like, oh, that resonates. Okay, I'll check out his podcast. Then I binge listen. Then I'll check out his blogs. Then I subscribe. And the model worked really well to generate a phenomenal income. And that gave me time to disappear for the other 39 hours of the week to create all of the new content. Now I launch it next week. And I've been, you know, my business has been on life support, by the way, over six figure life support for over three years. And now when I launch all the new products, I then spend time marketing all of that. But what I did is I launched small, I tested and validated the marketplace. And now I'm launching with all the things I know that they want. And my test sample of clients for the academy is over 120 people with unbelievable success in case studies. That's the way to build a business. Everyone's like, oh, I've got to build this grand thing up front. No. Then they're saying, oh, I need to create all this content. No, you don't. What you need to do is you need to be very strategic. You need to say, what market do I want to penetrate? And forget about that. Most people say, oh, modern day marketing talks about you uncover the niche in the market. You then create a message for that marketplace. And then you create the sales system. That's modern day marketing. And it is wrong. If you want to be a service provider or you know, if you want to sell any product or service online, people buy from people, not from companies these days. Things have changed. And if you're a person wanting to sell, and here are the key words, congruently and authentically, you need to be passionate about what you do. If you want to be passionate about what you do, you need to sell the product and service in a way that's congruently and authentically you, which means you need to remember what you're passionate about. If you don't know what you're passionate about, then you're always going to be feeling disingenuous. So the number one step is going, what is my, well, I always say, what is my goal? And then turn that into what is my why. Now, I already told you that I'm going to do this, but there's a podcast episode on my podcast called betterbusinesscoachpodcast.com. Most people can't figure out what their whys are, right? So I always suggest that you write three business goals, three personal goals, one incredibly selfish to you, which, and then once you've written those goals, use smart criteria. It works just as well as anything else, specific, measurable, and time-based to the major elements. It's a means to an end. Then write in 250 words or less, why each one of those goals is important to you. What you find is the high achievers can write the goals really quickly, but when they've got to write why it's important to them, they struggle to figure it out. And that's why we've spent so long trying to do what is required of us, we've forgotten about what we want. So by writing, what happens is people go back and rewrite their goals, they write strong why statements, and now finally they're tapping into their passion. Once you've done that, you create the message that's aligned with your whys and your passion. Once you've done that, you then look for the niche in the marketplace that resonates with that message. Now, people are like, oh, what if there's only one or two people? We live in a global economy these days. Everywhere you go, if there's one person in your city, there's a thousand cities. So what you need to do is then create a megaphone using technology, psychology, and strategy online to tap into your ideal customers or to point a megaphone to knock on their doors right across the world. That is the way you craft a marketing strategy these days. And as long as you understand the concepts behind that, you'll always make a great passive income. <laughs> wow. Uh, you, just, you just blew everything that I've been taught in the last four years out of the water. 
<laughs> Sorry about that. I love it. No, hey, it's, <laughs> I love that. That is, that is amazing. Well, do you, want me to give you, do you want me to give you an example that, because I know a lot of people that will be listening at home or listening on their drives to work, or perhaps you, will be sitting here going, okay, yeah, I get that. It sounds like it makes sense, but how does it actually apply in the real world? So I had a client um, who was a language coach out of California, and you know she taught kids and adults Mandarin. And she came to me with a real big problem, which a lot of people have experienced this problem, which is the market was getting more saturated, more competitive. There were people moving from other states in the US into California, wanting to start their own language businesses. And of course, like any business, they were willing to charge much less to get their first clients. So she was trying to charge $50 to $80 an hour, and she was competing with other people in the US that were willing to charge $30 to $40 an hour to get their first clients. She also had to deal with the fact that now, due to all these online websites, there were people offering to provide online coaching from China on Mandarin for $10 to $15 an hour, and websites that were launching say, hey, if you teach me Mandarin, I'll teach you English, and neither of us will pay. She was losing current clients, she was struggling to get new clients, and she came to me and she said, how do I compete in this crowded market? My answer is, let's try to avoid the battle altogether. So what I did is I looked at all the clients she worked with, and she had hundreds of clients, and what I found of all the people she worked with, there were two people specifically, only two, that she helped with three specific things. The first one was this concept called Galaxy. See, these were executives being relocated across to China. Now, if you were and I were going to sit down in a business meeting and I was going to try and sell you something, we'd have the meeting and at the end, if I was an incredibly bad salesperson, I would say something like, so if you'd like, to, do you want to move forward? And you would say, yes, no, or everybody's favorite, let me think about it. If you said, let me think about it, I know that I've got to call you back next week. And if you still tell me that you want to think about it, I know my chances of getting that sale are going down and down, right? Okay. Well... In China, they want to meet with you five or six times before they even discuss business. They're probably going to want to see you drunk over karaoke once or twice. Now, here's why. They're not talking about transactional 12 and 24 month deals. A lot of times they're talking 50 to 100 year contracts. That's how they do business in China. So that's longer than a lot of people's lifetimes, a lot of people's marriages. It's more important to them the character of the person than it is the terms of the contract because they can't get out of it in 12 months. And if they don't like working with the person, they're stuck. So she taught them that. She also taught them the difference between e-commerce in China and e-commerce in the Western world. And the third thing she helped them understand was the importance of respect. Like in China, while they you know, expect you to learn the language, that's not enough. They expect you to reduce your accent. They don't expect you to sound exactly like them, but they do expect you to at least try. Now, that's a respectful thing. It's the same as, you know, I just spoke at the Electrolux Summit uh, up in uh, Bangkok. And... 150 vice presidents in the room, and every time I handed them my card, they held the card, they cherished the card, they looked at all the detail, they then turned it over, cherished all the detail on the back before pulling out a card case, putting the card in, bowing slightly and putting it in the pocket. Anything less than that, you're not doing business in China. It's all about respect. And Wendy helped them understand this. And I said, Wendy, you're doing so much more for these people than just private language tuition. What are you doing? She said, I'm just trying to help. I said, Wendy, is it fair to assume that you're stuck in your functional skill. Tell me, as a result of the advice that you're giving them, is it likely that they're going to be more successful in China? You should, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's what I'm, why, why else would I give them this help? I said, okay, so why don't we call you the China Success Coach? Why don't we create a China Success Intensive? And forget about Mandarin. I mean, that's what all the kids are playing with now is charging $30 to $40 an hour. Instead, let's just focus on selling this. Said, well, that sounds cool, but, you know, who would I sell it to? And I said, well, think about it. She said, well, the executive. I said, yeah, I mean, these people are terrified. I mean, I moved from Australia to America, and I mean, everyone here kind of speaks the same language, and I was still terrified. Imagine going to China where no one speaks the same language. Good idea, but not the ideal customer. And she said, oh, well, then the corporation. I said, well, yeah, they've got millions, if not billions of dollars riding on the fact that these people are successful. But guess what? Still not your customer. She gets frustrated. Oh, who then? And they said, your ideal customer is the immigration attorney. She's like, what? And I said, well, you think about it. When I come from Australia to America, what do I have to get? I have to get a visa. Then I had to get a green card, right? Well, going to China, you've got to do the exact same thing. I said, so why not speak to the immigration attorneys? So she did. She started speaking to them. And these people were making between four to $7,000 for doing all the immigration paperwork, all the bureaucracy, finding the customer. They'd probably make two to $3,000 for any successful client. 
And she went to them and said, how would you like to make $3,000 for any successful introduction to the Chinese success coach? And they said, well, that's magic. What would I have to say? Simple. All you've got to say is congratulations, you've now got your visa. Now, I just want to double check. Are you as ready as possible to be relocated? And they said, well, look, we've got our visa organized. We've started to learn the language. The kids are getting pretty good at it too. You know, we've got our place organized. I think we're set. And they'd simply say, there's a lot more to it than that. I think you need to speak to the China success coach. Wendy would then get on the phone to the easiest sale on the planet. I mean, these people were terrified to go. The companies had millions, if not billions of dollars riding on it. And it was recommended by their attorney. So Wendy then gets on the easiest sale in the world and instead of struggling every day to make $50 to $80 an hour, she's charging twenty-seven. Well, she's charging $30,000 and making $27,000 for this five-week program with no hard selling whatsoever. That is the power of a strong unified message. See, for most people, and including Wendy, if you start with sales or Facebook ads or webinars, you've already lost because you're trying to target a market without really thinking about the marketing. So for Wendy, we looked at what her unique thing, I mean, these were things she was already doing, right? It wasn't forcing her to be something she was not. This was more authentic to her. So in, so what we did is we looked at the fact that she helps people with galaxy, e-commerce, and respect. The high-level benefit of that was China success. For me, I'm a business coach. I'm a branding expert. I'm a sales strategist. I'm a master in neurolinguistic. I'm, I'm too many things, and nobody cares. But when I say... I'm the rapid growth guy. I help organizations large and small obtain rapid growth. The simplicity of that message gets me heard in a crowded marketplace. And that was the key for me going from nothing to everything in the space of nine months online. It's the key to the success of all of my online businesses. And it's what most businesses are missing when they go about trying to make their podcast successful or their online website successful or just their offline business successful. Most people don't have that. And that's the problem. That's an amazing example. I love that. And that's real life and applicable. Like anyone can do that by just re, revisiting what it is that you've already done with and who you've been successful with. All right. All right. Now, it wouldn't uh, be a good interview if I didn't get a little sneak peek at, uh, at the book. So the, the, the introvert's edge, I think that's how we actually got connected. I saw something about it being an introvert myself. Uh, Share a little topic, a little bit of insight of what the, what the book is about. The- yeah, definitely. So one of the biggest things for me, so I learned to sell by absolute happenstance. I, I was an introverted kid with a reading speed of a sixth grader in late high school because I had a really horrible reading disability. And school was really difficult for me. So leaving high school, I did, I did well enough. I got in the top 20% of the state, but it took every bit of energy I had. And I was just exhausted. I took a year off to go and find myself. And I managed to convince my parents that as long as I supported myself, because I didn't come from a particularly rich family, then it would be okay. And I worked at a job at a real estate agency, actually. But don't think of me as the salesperson. I was the guy in the back office doing the admin with a look on my face saying, don't talk to me. I'm here to find myself. And about three weeks into my job, my boss comes up to me. He goes, Matt, I've got some bad news. Unfortunately, the company's shutting down and you're out of a job. I've been there three weeks. It was just before Christmas and, you know, it was December 20. It, it was, sorry, it was just coming up to December 20, which is when everybody goes on holidays in Australia. And, you know, we have our summer and Christmas break at the same time. So no one comes back till the 15th to 20th of January. There's no getting a job unless you want a job in commission only sales. Now, my father had broken his back for 80 hours a week. There was no way I was going to go to my dad and say, sorry, that promise I made you, I'm not going to be able to keep. So I had to go and take a job in commission only sales. Well, after five days of product training, not a single second of sales training, I get thrown on this road and said, go sell. So I go to walk in the first door and realize no one's actually taught me how to sell. Not only is it terrifying, I don't know what I'm doing. 93 doors it took me to make my first sale. That's 93 doors of rejection, 93 doors of getting told to go get a real job. People can be lovely, especially around Christmas time. So. But on the 93rd door, I remember I made $70 and I was ecstatic. I walked out and for a minute, about a minute, life was good until I had that realization I've got to do this every day of the week for the rest of the year. That wasn't okay. I had to find a different way to learn. Now, I couldn't exactly pick up a Zig Ziglar or a Brian Tracy book. So I taught myself how to sell on YouTube. And over the space of six weeks, I taught myself the steps of the sale. And I got better and better and better until about six weeks later, I got told that I was now the number one salesperson in the largest sales and marketing company in the Southern Hemisphere. It went from six weeks from having no business being in sales to being the number one person. Now, most people assume as an introvert, you have to have the gift of the gap. 
I learned because I had no option but to tell myself it's a system just like any other. If I just focus on the steps, I will become amazing at it. And about, you know, I got promoted about seven times in about 12 months. I ended up the state manager of the largest, uh, the, uh, the head office state in the largest sales and marketing company in the Southern Hemisphere. I then opened up my own business about, about well, at the end of about a year after I started that job. And it turned over a million dollars in the first year and, and $3 million, well, $4.2 million in year three and was the number one brokership for business to business mobiles in the country. So the reason why I wrote the book is when I came to America and started talking about it, I did it as an introvert. What I found is a lot of introverts would come up to me and go, Matt, no one can sell. If you're an introvert, you can't sell. And I found your story resonating because you told me it wasn't true. I, I want to know more about that. And I kept saying, people, somebody should write a book about this. And nobody did. So, of course, I wrote the book. Now, the person I wrote the book with was actually one of my clients who was an introverted ghostwriter who I took his business from struggling to make well, in 2013, he made $27,000. When he reached out to me in October of 2014, he made $12,000 for the year. And within two weeks, he made $40,000. Within six weeks, he made $80,000. By the end of the year, one hundred and twenty. dollars And the following year, he made just shy of $300,000. He's like, Matt, we have to write this book. So I agreed to write the book. And the book's fantastic. I mean, I have to say, Derek is an amazing writer, and he really captured my essence. I mean... It was a big collaboration, it took nearly two years, but I mean, the book's been endorsed from everything from Harvard University to Princeton to Neil Patel to Malcolm, um, Malcolm, um, Glo Gal sorry, Malcolm Gladwell. And the whole process is, it teaches you a natural step-by-step -step process that just leads to a sale, right? No hard selling, it's just a natural progression. And the predominant element of the sales process is how to create well-articulated stories so you're not trying to pitch them on your value and push yourself on people. It's about teaching people how to tell stories that embed your value, that get people to see you as the only logical choice. Now, you noticed I did that with Wendy. I used the Wendy story to articulate a, a, a thing, a, a concept, to help everybody understand, but it also embedded the value of how great I am at working with my one-on-one -on -one clients so the focus is, instead of me saying, oh, no, no, trust me, I'm really good at what I do, instead I just tell a story. So I've used these concepts with, you know, bulldog salespeople, I'm talking fists on the table, yelling at the phone, hyped up on coffee, and taught them how to tell stories instead to sidestep objections. And now they're booking appointments with C-level exec executives, much bigger, you know, the whales that they could never get before. The number of appointments have quadrupled. You know, it added a million dollars on, on a $3 million turnover. They added a million dollars on their bottom line in the space of two months. And now they're over a $10 million company less than 12 months later, right? These, the whole process of this book is to tell introverts not only that they can sell, but show them exactly how to. And the whole book teaches them the power of story in the sales process. And the whole book is written like a novel. So you read stories to learn the process. And that's, you know, for me, introverts, you know, it's kind of scary learning sales. So that's why I wanted people to learn by being entertained. And that was the biggest focus for me. And then the podcast that I'm launching around it is called The Introvert's Edge, which looks at, you know, we've had the founder of Ugg Boots, you know, it's a billion dollar brand, the, the founder of BNI, uh, which is the number one networking group in the world, 8,000 networking groups. And they're all introverts and they're all talking about how they succeeded. And the goal was to, of course, the book focuses on sales, and, but the, the podcast uh, focuses on everything from presentation skills to networking to sales to all the other things and eventually we'll start talking about parenting and all sorts of other things because introverts sometimes struggle with those things too. So everything there, the first chapter of the book is available at theintrovertsedge.com and you can also check out the podcast and I'll be doing my Netflix model of podcast. I'll be launching a whole series of episodes uh, in the later part of November right through to December and January through the launch of the book. It's fantastic. I love the idea of, I may borrow that, the, the Netflix approach to podcasting. You're not the only one that will borrow it. It's been borrowed quite a few times because, you know, a lot of, especially high profile people, they know they want to create a podcast, but they don't want to be committed to it long term. And also what I find is you can go really deep on a topic by doing a Netflix model because I can find the right guests. I can curate. So I'm not worried about finding 150 guests. I only need to curate enough content. Like my better business coach was, I did half, a third of the topics were me doing a sermon on the mic where I was telling people a strategy or something to do. Then I did a, a worksheet or a template for the other third. And then the other third was interviews with a topic matter expert. 
So it was a, but it was like a curriculum to teach business coaches how to get their first clients and how they could keep them by doing a really structured first five coaching sessions that would then precipitate so many more clients after that. Sorry, so many more hours of coaching after that. So I could go really deep. On the introvert's edge, I mean, the guests that I've been able to get, everything from, you know, Ryan Dice, the number one digital marketer on, on the planet, really. I mean, he's impossible to get an interview with, but I got one. And, you know, a, a bunch of other interviews with just exceptional people just because I went deep because I'm not worried about, oh, gosh, if I spend all my time getting that guest, I'm not going to get the other 30 guests I've got to get for the year. I love that. All right. You've, you shared a wealth of knowledge with us today. I hope, I know my guests and our listeners are going to enjoy. And, um, hey, they can see in the show notes. I'll reference the websites. But maybe uh, just one last time, what's the, what's the first direction they should go? Uh, well, the, for people, the rapid growth guy or the introvert's edge? Which way do? Well, what you can do, I mean, there are a couple of things we've discussed today. So if you're an introvert and you're scared of selling, you should definitely check out theintrovertsedge.com. The first chapter is more than 10% of the book. So that's available for you to download. There's also a cool teaser video, so you can check that out. It's a lot of fun. Uh, for people that are struggling to come up with a message and understand their niche, like Wendy was, there's actually a five-step process to how to do that. I'm a big fan of teaching people how to do it from home. So if you go to matthewpollard.com forward slash growth, you can actually download that template and it will take you through the five-step process that you need to identify your unified message and your niche of willing to buy clients. And what's crazy about this is I did this in front of nearly 200 people at the National Freelance Conference in Austin, Texas. And after 45 minutes, I said, who here has a strong message they now feel much more confident about sharing with the world to get more clients? Like 97% of the room put their hands up. The sad thing was, I said, who here has spent more time on their marketing in the 45 minutes, 45 minutes we've spent here today than they've ever spent on their business. And about 85% of the room kept their hands up. So that template will work. Here's the, chip, here's the trick if you do it. So focus on just going through that five-step process. And if you're struggling with step three, make sure you go and check out uh, betterbusinesscoachpodcast.com episode 17. Because a lot of times the reason why you'll struggle with step three in that five-step process is you don't have the laser focus on what you're passionate about and what your whys are. And that will mean you'll find it hard to decide what niche is the right one for you. Uh, so yeah, but I mean, you can type Matthew Pollard in on Google and I take up, I think, the first three pages on Google. So I would just you know, start going through the content. You'll, you'll find I'm very specific. I don't produce anything that isn't of high value because I'm not one of those people that just produces stuff to please Google. I produce stuff that has an impact. I love it. And we'll end it with the, uh, I wrote it down because I saw it somewhere, is just go do it. I like that. Just go do it. Uh, kind of reflective of an interview I did last week with another guest, and her thing is just, just do it. You know, just don't think about it. Just go to his website, get the five, you know, get the template on the five steps and just, just do it. Well, Change I it. think Robert Kiyosaki says it best of all. He talks about the fact that most entrepreneurs – the reason why they're not successful is they're looking for all the lights to be green along the journey before they start the journey. And because of that, they have, you know, that fear of commitment, anxiety, even if they've quit their job to start their business, they're like, oh, I won't make that step and I won't make that step. To be successful as an entrepreneur, and you got me to do this assessment beforehand, and I'm like, I have a just go do it mentality. If you wait for all the lights to be green, you won't be successful. You have to get started and assume, not because of lack of effort, Focus on learning, focus on do the work, but just know that those lights will go green before you hit the light. That's a great way to wrap it up. So thank you so much for being on the Calm Cafe today, Matthew. And uh, I don't know what to say. It's like, I'm going to go, I'm going to go do it. I'm going to go and, and go and get that template because I'm pretty sure I spent either not enough time or too much time on my, on my marketing and, uh, what, what, why would I tell my listeners to go do it if I don't go do it myself? So uh, thanks for being on the show today. You're more than welcome. It's been an absolute pleasure. All right.